That phrase, suitable for viewing in the home, comes from the Video Recordings Bill, often called the Video Nasties Bill, which is soon expected to pass into law. This is a private member's bill in the name of Graham Bright MP, which has had strong support from the government and from all the parties. But at the very moment it's likely to become law. There are growing criticisms of the bill. Its opponents are denouncing it as bringing in state censorship of an unprecedented kind, making us into the most censored country in the Western world. Later in the studio, we'll be hearing from supporters of the bill, opponents, teachers, parents, teenagers, and some producers of videos. But first, here's an open space report on the background. EMI Video proudly presents films like The Deer Hunter, Death on the Nile, One Flew Over, The Cuckoo's Nest, what a fabulous title. Murder. On the Orient Express. Don't look now. <laughs> Convoy! Where? There they are. Every day, video duplicating plants such as CBS Fox and Thorn EMI copy films onto thousands of cassettes. Britain is in the forefront of the video revolution. We have more video recorders per person than any other country in the world. More movies are now seen on video than in the cinema. But regulations which were designed for films don't apply to the new technology, which has created anxieties about controlling the new medium. In 1982, under the Obscene Publications Act, police seized 22,000 cassettes in the metropolitan area alone. These are the cassettes Driller, Killer and Death Trap, the first two of the so-called video nasties to be withdrawn from distribution. In a test case brought under the Obscene Publications Act, Wilsden magistrates ordered their immediate forfeiture. In court, a solicitor for the Director of Public Prosecutions called the material an extravaganza of gory violence, capable of depraving and corrupting those who watched it. And there was a clear warning that though this case was not brought under Section 2 of the Act, which could have led to the distributors, VIPCO, being fined or even sent to prison, this should not be taken in any manner as a norm for the future. For the DPP to go for seizure, when he knows quite as well as you know and I know that people that produce this kind of thing, that make huge fortunes out of this kind of thing, they couldn't care less about seizure. The seizing of the tapes was the cue for a vigorous press campaign to ban these so-called nasties. Critics felt there was an overreaction amounting to a moral panic. I think if I best sum it up by quoting you a very small news item that I spotted in the Daily Mirror. It was nothing to do with video nasties directly. It was about a very nasty attack on some ponies in the south of England. And at the end of telling this story, there was a quote from the Margate police in which they said that the attacker must have been influenced either by video nasties or a new moon. Now, I think that very nicely captures something about the way this whole issue has been presented. That actually, that makes it sound very like witchcraft. And the way in which the whole campaign has presented itself has actually ascribed quite magical powers to flickering pictures on screens and how they hypnotize and then drug and then addict children. Ever since the late 60s, there have been a growing number of campaigners against what they saw as the dangerous increase in permissiveness and the lowering of standards in society. Video nasties were a new battle in an old war. Essence of a video is that it is shown in the home. And I'm afraid, you know, people who say, but why shouldn't adults be able to see this kind of thing in their own home? I I'm half tempted to say that people who make that kind of demand, knowing that children are likely to see it, aren't really themselves very mature and adult. There are places where these people can go and see this material if they want it. But we're talking about material in the home. And there has now been 
tragic story after tragic story of the effect of this type of material on the children. The moment you mention children, people actually stop asking questions and they have, a re they have reactions instead. And I think what's happened is that people have become scared of asking the serious questions. You see, there is some serious research done on how do young people, and we're not really talking about children now, we're mainly talking about people in the age range 13 to 18. How do young people use video? And actually what it's found is that they use it to scare themselves. They actually quite consciously use it as a test of their courage. And I think that's a very different picture from the one with which we're presented when we have headlines, very melodramatic headlines that talk about rape of our children's minds, the corruption, the sadistic pleasure that people take in destroying the morality of the young and so on. Very melodramatic headlines have run all the way through the campaign. Of course, we are talking about films that show in great detail uh, mutilation, sadism, and this can come as a terrible shock, particularly to a young person. And of course, there are as the law stands at present, um, any youngster of any age uh, can go and hire or buy one of these things. And there have been a lot of uh, instances where youngsters have pooled their pocket money to go and get one of these things to see whether they frighten them or not. And of course, it does have effect on youngsters, as indeed it has an effect on adults. Unlike video, there are already restrictions on films shown in Britain. Cinemas have to be licensed by local authorities who have the final say on what is shown in their area. But in practice, they usually follow the recommendations of the British Board of Film Censors. Although it has no statutory power, the board certificates recommending films as only suitable for certain ages are accepted by almost all authorities. In 1983, the video industry decided to set up its own voluntary system of classification. Videos without a certificate would not be distributed. But the scheme was never given a trial. The Conservative Election Manifesto had promised to legislate on the video issue, though the pledge was fulfilled in the form of a private member's bill. First and foremost aim was the protection of youngsters. And so uh, the path I took to do this was to ensure that all video films are given a category. In the same way as films are given a category, starting off with U and UC, which is especially for children, going through PG, Parental Guidance, 15, 18. Um, now, by doing that, uh, one is obviously telling the shopkeeper exactly what is in that video. And that ensures that the shopkeeper can have imposed on them, as the bill does, um, the liability not to sell to young people under age. So we're protecting them in the same way as you do from fireworks or alcohol. I think you've got to distinguish the, the reasonable right of any parent to say, look, I don't actually want my children perhaps to have a nightmare or to see things which I don't think they're ready to see or to try to understand. That's fair enough. That's quite different from then spreading that into a generalised, these things should be outlawed and no one should ever be allowed to see them. There is a rising level of violence in society and people are worried by it. And it's very easy to, to create a shibboleth, to search out a new witch, a new witch craze starts. And as with that quote I gave you at the beginning, it's very easy to look for something which actually has virtually no connection at all with what's going on and say, let's blame it on that. The image the campaigners presented was of children having unrestricted access to horrific videos. Just as the video bill was to be debated in the Commons, new horror headlines greeted the publication of a controversial report which was produced by the so-called parliamentary group Video Inquiry. A group of uh, MPs of all parties and from both houses who have a concern with the family and the protection of children began meeting and discussing this and uh, they asked me if I would direct a piece of research to discover the facts about what children actually are seeing in the home 
uh, that would enable Parliament to give a rational debate to this subject. The report's claims gave academic credibility to the headlines and were not without influence in Parliament. The bill went through unopposed. We discovered that 45% uh, of children between the ages of 7 and 16 in schools throughout Britain have seen one or more of the so-called video nasties. That's films that have actually been prosecuted in a court of law and found obscene. We've got something for you to do here. It's a questionnaire. Do you know what a questionnaire is? No. Can you guess what a questionnaire is? Someone asks. What do you think? Well, you ask questions. Ask questions, that's right. That's why it's called a questionnaire. And on the top... However much the report's claims about children's viewing were believed in Parliament and the press, much of the academic community greeted it with disbelief. We've been trying to get video nasties for a long time, and they're very, very difficult to get hold of. And so it seemed extremely unlikely that 40% of children from the age of six years old could have seen a video nasty. The sheer availability of them would, would make that extremely unlikely, very implausible. And when we saw the questionnaires that were used by the parliamentary group video inquiry, it became very obvious what was likely to have gone wrong with the research. I mean, it isn't a good piece of research by a long shot. And in fact, the questionnaire is, is very misleading for children. Uh, questionnaires that are self-completed, in fact, are uh, very difficult ones to produce. And it seemed what was happening is that children were very likely to have ticked off the, the titles of films that they liked the sound of, and not ones they'd actually seen. Within the class, the children were told that this is not an examination and it wasn't a test of their knowledge in any way. Uh, they had to work individually and in silence, so they couldn't compare results. They had to, um, uh, they were told rather that uh, uh, this um, was uh, of great importance and it was a privilege really for them to be taking part in this. Uh, they had to answer honestly and there were uh, numerous checks that we uh, uh, introduced uh, on reliability because obviously um, children are not very reliable as um, uh, respondents in any piece of research and so we designed our research to make sure that we did get reliable answers. Your Alright, that should be easy, shouldn't it? Oh, no. To test the reliability of the report's methods, Dr Cumberbatch modified the original questionnaire and tried it out with several groups of children. That's how we went about trying to replicate the parliamentary group video inquiry research by substituting in their questionnaire fictitious film titles. It's a normal psychologist, psychologist ploy really to check on reliability of, of, of data. And what we do is we made up film titles, um, Blood on the Teeth of the Vampire and things of that kind, and substitute those for the actual video nasties titles in the parliamentary group video inquiry questionnaire. Now when we gave that to school children, we found two thirds of them claim they'd seen films which never exist. What's, what's the Hospital of Horrors like? It's, uh, it's, it's, it's a bit scary. What sort of film is it? It's got, it's got, it's got a lot of blood in it. A lot of and, blood? Mm. Um, I can't say much about it really. I don't think that it's a, a valid test to, uh, to give them fake titles. Um, I think that is a, a dishonest way of um, carrying out a piece of research. Uh, I believe our method was much better of trying to get honest answers rather than try to fool children into giving dishonest answers. The reason we have been concerned is because huge claims have been made. They were all over the press. Huge headlines saying 40% of six-year-olds are watching video nasties and being corrupted and in five years we're going to have a time bomb of violence all directly from their report. All those things are said in there. It had a tremendous role in pushing that bill through Parliament and in helping to stifle any worries that people might have had about it. All this influence for a report that, frankly, would not stand up to a first-year research essay by a student. The video recordings bill passed through the Commons with all party support. The thousands of cassettes produced for sale or hire will become subject to stringent new restrictions. A powerful new censoring body is to be appointed by the Home Secretary. What about my wife?
What the hell are they, Doctor? I don't know. It all started about three months ago. The censors will have the power to refuse certification or demand cuts in a video. Claims that the bill imposes state censorship are denied by its sponsors. I don't know how they can deny it. It's very easy to play with words, you see, and say, oh, no, of course, we're just classifying films. You actually have to look at what will happen. According to secret guidelines, which will be issued by the Home Office, which can be amended at any time, and if they don't like the way they operate on the secret guidelines, they can sack the BBFC from doing so, and have said that if they don't like them, they will sack them from doing it. I have that recorded in the committee stage. So that's how it's going to operate. All films will be classified on that basis, under instruction from the Home Office. How can you call that anything other than state censorship? The film industry, of course, has been subjected to uh, the sort of categorization I'm talking about and have been also subject to the Obscene Publications Act. The two have worked side by side, but of course the videos is a new phenomena. What we've done is brought them very much in line with what is happening in the film industry. And uh, we have, in fact, made lots of exemptions. Uh, people still think that everything is subject to this, but of course if we're things like sport or music recitals or anything that's aimed at education or medical stuff, He's exempt. It doesn't come in uh, uh, to the, to the uh, grips of my bill at all. The bill has been designed to look at the special problem of people seeing films at home. Now, the use of the word home is very ambiguous for new legislation. If it means anything at all, it's a license to print money for lawyers. Uh, because inevitably, the question will be, what is home? Does home, in fact, mean the Englishman's castle, where we have a greater freedom to do things than we can do on the streets? Or does home equal children? And, of course, the, the moral campaigners will actually take this second definition and say home equals children, and therefore films that are unsuitable for children should not be available for home entertainment. The Evil Dead. The sort of film which might no longer be available on video is Sam Raimi's cult horror film, The Evil Dead. Despite having an ex-film certificate, winning numerous awards, and being the most popular video of 1983, it was prosecuted earlier this year under the Obscene Publications Act. The film was acquitted by a jury three weeks ago, but the question remains, will the new video censors consider it suitable for viewing in the home? Supposed to be one of these on here. If anyone can stand up and defend the sort of horrific scenes that I have had to see and other members of Parliament have had to see, I believe they're living in a different world to that world that I live in and the world that I believe the majority of people live in. Those are unacceptable. I believe that uh, research is taking place and it will show that these films not only affect young people, but I believe they affect adults as well. It goes far too far. Now, the 18 category will still be pretty liberal. In fact, more liberal than most countries in this world in what goes into those videos. And I think there is no way that I or anyone else can really defend uh, films that go into the sort of mutilation and show the sort of sadism uh, and horror uh, that the video nasty shown. And of course we're only talking at present about 30 or so uh, titles out of six or seven thousand titles. So it's a very small number of things we're talking about. And the vast majority of good entertainment will still be available on videos in the home. I could feel myself agreeing and disagreeing all the way through that and I bet that's what the people we've invited in the studio will be doing tonight as well. One of them is video journalist John Sanders and it was he who first suggested Open Space do a program on the video bill because though there had been enormous media coverage of the so-called video nasties, there had been little scrutiny of the censorship powers of the bill. Now George Sanders, you heard, John Sanders, <laughs> you heard Graham Bright say we are still going to be more liberal than many countries and the vast majority of good entertainment will still be available for viewing in the home. So now what doubts have you still got? Well, 
vast number of doubts. Um, I don't think uh, that, that the vast majority of movies will be available for seeing in the home, certainly not uh, in the state in which they are at the moment. Um, I can give you an example of the um, of a movie which uh, uh, depicts a, um, an SS officer who um, uh, has his way with uh, um, a prisoner and um, threatens to kill her children. Now, I'm not talking about a video nasty, I'm talking ab about Sophie's Choice. That movie has, at the moment, a 15 certificate, and uh, that means that anyone uh, under the age of 15 isn't allowed to view it in the cinema. Um, now, when we question, is that suitable for viewing in the home, we must say to ourselves, well, probably, if we define that, take that definition, as in your program, that's for, uh, that means young children shouldn't be allowed to watch it then um, we have to make cuts and alterations to that movie, just subtle ones, just slight ones, but in fact, that would wreck that movie. And people would very quickly learn that movies on video, that's mature movies, uh, are not worth watching. And that means that we'd be restricted to James Bond, we'd be restricted to cartoons, and uh, the entire video industry would collapse. It has now, to do with good, lovely movies, and oh, I want to know what country. mature means. This rather well, delightfully well, respectful well, mature, I would, I would not call worth so, yes, certainly. if you cut something out. I would do you say that... I, no, I don't. What I don't mean that at all. Mature. I mean a, a movie like Sophie's Child. I'm, I'm afraid that uh, um, you're, hmm? you've been reading too many popular newspapers. No, mature I'm just plowing through the bill yeah, in the House I was, of I was trying to avoid yeah. uh, the word adult because it has connotations with movies. The same sort of thing. I don't mean that at all. You know, the I mean, a movie Mr. like Sanders is giving at the moment is that the, this bill is a product of the spec Mary Whitehouse, the Festival of Light, Mr. Hill. It's not at all. What brought it to our attention in the House of Commons was the NSPCC, mm -hmm. who were horrified what was happening to children. Cliff Hill's report, whether it's right or wrong, I don't really know, and I don't particularly care, didn't come out until it was halfway through. Mm -hmm. I think that should be made absolutely clear. We're not talking about state censorship, or no more state censorship, if we're being honest, than we've had since 1909 with the British Board of Film Censors. They have worked extremely well, and I feel that they work extremely well with video well, recordings in the home. Don't read things into the bill which aren't there. Yes. May I come in? Yes. I think right at the outset, uh, John Sanders has failed to distinguish between uh, what I think is an essential distinction if we're to understand this bill at all <clears throat> and that is controls on the one hand which are necessary for the protection of the more susceptible members of society such as our children and censorship on the other now you may be prepared, uh, surprised to hear me uh, say this sitting here but nobody's more against censorship than I am but you were, you were the person to actually weren't you help to draft that the, the phrase suitable for viewing in the home. And I find the word suitable, for instance, a, a very difficult one, I might say so. Suitable, your, what's suitable for you is not suitable for me. Isn't it a very movable feast, that word? I entirely agree with you. May I tell you the history of this? Before the bill began its passage before, uh, through either house, uh, the draftsman had left the word simply as suitable for viewing. And like you, I could see no sense in that at all. So I suggested that the words in the home should be added because it seemed to me that you had to provide the authority charged with this task of sifting out the real nasty with some sort of yardstick. And I don't think there's any difficulty in understanding what that means. Mary, if I, yes. Mary Whitehouse, if I, could, if I could say you're the queen of campaigners and you've been well used to a lot of questions, may I put a very personal question yes. to you? As a parent, would you have liked to have been told that you are not responsible enough to choose for your children? Oh, I shouldn't even have thought that that was the kind of question that could come out of the bill. You would If not. I was uh, a parent today, and, and remember that the vast majority now of mothers are working during the daytime anyway, mm -hmm. and they come home at night with work to do in the house and the rest of it, and uh, if they're worrying, about, and if I as a mother were worrying in the evening as to whether there were certain videos or even more, if I didn't have them in my home, knowing that children would go out round the corner to their friends and so on and see them there. Could, uh, maybe, could I just put a question to uh, uh, Martin, wherever he is? 
Have you got any children? I have two children. No, no, sorry. No. Oh, Who are you talking about? I, I'm talking the gentleman in the red... Uh, who is on the film? I certainly have children, yes. You have children. Can I ask how old they are? They're nine and thirteen. Yes. Now I want to ask another question. Would you let your children, and have you shown your children, some of the video nasties, the worst kind of video nasties that this bill deals with, have you shown them to them? I'm happy to answer that question, and I'll, I'll have to add something to it, though, in answering it. Yes. I feel personally quite ambivalent about showing them to my children. Oh. And I'll be honest about why, because I don't yet know in relation to individual films as to whether, uh, as to how they would respond to them. Yeah, I can use exactly an analogy. That's exactly what every other parent thinks. Right. But that, uh, that, you see, ducks an important question. Many parents look at their individual children and say, is my child ready to understand that kind of thing? For heaven's sake, th there is a problem, for example, about at what age you explain to a child why he or she should be cautious with strangers. You encourage them from a very early age to be cautious with strangers. At what age you explain why is a real problem. What we are worried about is the creation of a huge system of censorship to cope with individual parents' problems of how they perceive their children. But it isn't a huge system of, of censorship. It's a very, very limited one. Now, I'd like to ask you another question, if I may. Do you agree with the Race Relations Bill, <laughs> which says that these things may not be said, may not be put on film? Do you agree with that bill? I find that a very difficult question to answer because well, I don't know on, the race... Well, come on, yes or no, try. Well, that's silly because I no, don't know the race silly. relations bill that well. You that's a silly means. question. You know what We're it's talking about, about a bill about that I do know controlling well. what people say, what people hear. Mm. Right? It has to do with censorship. Oh, Mrs. Whitehurst, uh, you are confusing issues I'm here. not. I'm raising the... The, the question no. is that the, it, the legislation on racist uh, attacks, on racist language in Britain, is geared specifically towards specific cases where language is racist. The Video Recordings Bill deals with all videos, every single video, not simply those that are produced for profit by large commercial concerns, but every video, whether those be produced by community groups, <coughs> by campaign groups, by absolutely everybody. <coughs> now, this bill, according to the, the bill as it stands at present, has to be financially self-supporting in, in the censorship department. That means people will have to pay to get their, their film certificated. That's fine if you're Thorny MI. That's fine if you're a large multinational company. If, however, you're a youth club in Tower Hamlets who's produced uh, a sex guidance film for youngsters, you've introduced programs, say, to do with the natural childbirth movement. You will be then... covered in the bill if you read yes. it. Yes. May I just say, yes. I yes. believe yes. not. Yes. 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 I right. yes. At the back, may I just back. One, no, one, the one, point. Just one second, please. On the point of censorship, the reason why I raised the race relation bill is because the bogey of censorship is raised all the time about this bill. And I was just trying to clarify, you can't be in favour of censorship in one direction and be against it in yes. another. Simon Hughes, Hughes, MP, you've been trying. That's an invalid point because, you see, Raci racialist words and racialist actions are judged by their effect in the legislation. Their words and actions likely to incite violence or a reaction. The problem with the bill as it is at the moment, although it had one very laudable and proper objective, which was to certificate, describe, yeah. for people going into a video shop what it was they were picking up. We saw a, bit, saw a bit in the film about two youngsters. It is right that they should know, just as when you go to the cinema, you should know what the category of product is. It's a mm. Trades Description Act point. <clears throat> and the difference between that, this and the film industry is that the film industry is regulated by local authorities, elected representatives of the people, who actually decide, having considered what the British Board of Film Censors do first, what the people who elected them ought to be allowed to see. We don't have the same democratic accountability. It's actually a nominated body appointed by the Home Secretary and there is no accountability at all. And that means that instead of somebody deputed to do the job by public consent, that isn't here, and it therefore takes away from the parent the right which they would otherwise be entitled to uh, have done for them, have exercised for them by somebody they've elected to do that job. The impact, the visual impact of seeing some of these horrific films. Now, in the House of Commons, we actually saw people eating live monkeys' brains. The, the, this is absolutely true. You may laugh. <laughs> But, but, but that is, that is, that is, that is, that is just a moment. Just, but just, that's I'm a sure specialty. You, yeah, but you see, there's. Yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm sure I've been there. <laughs>
Not but me. I've but, read but, about yeah, it. Yeah, so. but the rea yes. And um, what's the difference, Mavis? Mm. For you, reading about it in a book, perhaps seeing a picture in a book, but actually seeing it happen on a screen. Now imagine that further still in your own home, if I when the doors are locked. Nose, and what is happening? Disgusting. Just a moment. What is happening at the moment? You're seeing that the video recording machine has taken the place of the baby minder. Mm -hmm. It has taken the place of the magician. And I'm afraid a lot of parents are acting irresponsible. Well, Martin, there's wrestling with his conscience, deciding whether he's <laughs> right or wrong, and whether it's going to affect his children or not. Heaven knows what damage is being <clears throat> done. I think it's extremely significant that actually the thing that upsets you is people eating monkeys' brains, that you've designated a particular area of a problem. Now, when you ask that question about um, would you let your child view it, would you let your child view this particular thing, wouldn't it upset you, what you don't ask is the other question, which is what about all the other things that they're watching on television? What about all the revolting, endless, routine representations yes. of, no, listen, male aggression of stereotypical families where women are treated absolutely appallingly in certain sure. ways. Now, I'm saying, no, absolutely we not put it in the bill. What you have designated as a particular area of problem which happens to correspond to a particular set of right-wing or political Party views well, about all what support. is considered to be a problem for this society. Now, I think there are problems for this society, and that is the level of agreed socially sanctioned male violence now, that for me is a problem, but I, you don't sure. treat it by intervening with censorship, which is, is organized in a completely undemocratic way and which has very dangerous political implications, when it's what it's coming from is a particular designation of a particular set of concerns. I think this is, a real, this is a real problem with the bill, and that is that any sort of constructive discussion about it is turned into anybody who is opposed to the bill as it stands at the moment is turned into a purveyor of porn who wants to corrupt children, etc. Now, many people supported the bill. As has been said, it had all party support to begin with. When Graham Bright moved it in the House, he said, look, this is a first draft. We'll have to try and sort it out to get it right. Very few changes have been made. And what we have ended up with is a bill which does far more than tackle the issue of video nasties. And Graham Bright is quite wrong on that, Phil, when he says that all that happened is that this bill does for videos what has already happened to film. Some examples have been given. Let me just give you just one more. News. Now, news films have always been exempt from classification. I suppose because by the time stuff got classified, it would be old, it's not news. Now, news videos, if they portray violence, etc., if they portray perhaps ships being blown up, etc., will not be exempt. Films produced by groups like the Natural Childbirth Trust will not be exempt not because they will not. Well, it is true, <laughs> and they will. Not, well, if, perhaps people should read through the bill more carefully because we have, in fact, had the privilege of an organisation of discussing these points well, with David Mallow, etc. Because such videos will not necessarily be produced by the medical profession. I think the argument about books is very interesting because if you watch that film and you watch the kids going into the video shop, my mind was saying, ah, that's a pity because it's obviously going to be libraries <laughs> next because kids can walk into libraries. I'm going to take the point of the young lady with the blonde hair. I don't mind being called a young lady. <laughs> the bit about malaggression is quite right. I was talking to a couple of lads. I live in Hackney, right? Poorest bar in the country, the white business, that's nothing to do with it too much. But the lads have got a local church youth club, and I was talking to them about this because I was coming on telly and all that. And I spoke to one of them about a video film he'd seen. I'd call it a nasty, okay, whatever people call it. It was sexually explicit, and the poor young lady in it, although she probably wasn't poor, she earned a few bob out of it, she was attacked, etc. And, and he said, What's wrong with it? I said, What is wrong with it is when you go out and get married, if you do get married, would you then want to consider doing those things to your wife? He said, Well, yeah, why not? Now, oh, it's another isolated instance. Okay, yeah. we're talking about the folk early on on the, on the film about, well, who's got all these figures banded about? We get down to the brass tax folk working in chap in Tower Hamlets and that. They must have heard of consequences like this. I mean, our local rag, the Hackney, because it's full of, well, not full of it, but every other week there's horrible stories in it. Yeah, I don't care too much about all the parliamentary stuff. It's a little bit above me, blew me. And when it gets down to malaggression, I agree with you. But how do you deal with it? I hope you would be thankful if you were going to be attacked because someone was watching that sort of stuff. But at least there was something to help. Yeah. But I, I mean, I agree with you in the designation of the problem. What I don't agree with is the kind of solution. I, I mean, I don't agree with how the bill is designating the problem. As far as the bill is concerned, the problem is just violence per se. 
I don't think violence is a problem per se. Mm. What I think is a problem about violence is the meanings that surround a particular act of violence. And it seems to me in this culture, the meanings that surround violence that we see are almost invariably meanings that say that this is a natural form of male behavior. Yeah. However, I'm absolutely convinced by the arguments of the side opposing the bill that what this bill is doing is actually completely um, is introducing a form of censorship which is actually extremely dangerous. I don't think you tackle the problem of male violence in this way. You tackle it entirely differently. You tackle but be it in... that right or wrong, might it be too late one time for say you, and I hope it isn't, but you know, <coughs> something's got to be done. Well, Can this I... bill is not about male well, violence, it's incidentally. It's... No, no, but it helps. I'm removing the jurisdiction for that. I, mean, I don't think that anyone in this room would dispute, uh, dispute, uh, dispute the stories that you've told and uh, this uh, lady here. Um, well, and inevitably, yeah, okay, there are, there are, inevitably, there are problems, and problems do arise. How do you solve them? And in my opinion, you don't solve them by removing that jurisdiction from a court of law, which is where it exists at the mm -hmm. moment, and handing it over that's, to petty uh, bureaucrats uh, and law, setting up well, a huge... You've seen publications, that, presumably. Indeed. Which has been it's shown to be an ass right through the years it's been in existence. No, 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 can no, I, can I just turn... Just I, evidence of 20, I want to turn, to a, I want to, turn to a parent, Dave King at the back. Um, yes. I don't know your views on, on, on the bill, uh, the censorship or not, but can I just put one thing to you first? Um, all parents censor for their child as they're bringing them up. That's a natural thing, isn't yes, it? Indeed. Because you're trying to protect your child from... But I mean, have you got any feeling that this responsibility that should be the parents mainly is being taken away from the parent? Not at all. No. My position really is that I'm, I'm opposed to the freedom of parents to have access to any kind of uh, video, video nasty and so on, because of a very graphic experience in my own home. We don't have a video recorder. We wouldn't have video nasties in the home. My son, uh, spending a Saturday morning with a friend, uh, indeed with two friends, uh, finished up because of the inclement weather, I believe, in the lounge of his friend's home, watching that indescribably evil video in my uh, view, uh, The Evil Dead. He came home, uh, was unable to eat his meal, we attach no significance to that at all. He later went to bed and uh, at two o'clock in the morning I was awakened out of a deep sleep to go into my boy's bedroom. He was in a crouched position with his hands between his knees, screaming, screeching in fact, uh, a, a sickening sound, and uh, took a great deal of uh, time uh, composing him. We eventually got through that night. The following night, bearing in mind he's 11 years old, almost 12 years old, he wet his bed. Now that was quite uncharacteristic. He sobbed, he had uh, nightmares, he came into our room with pictures from the evil dead still passing before his mind. That's several weeks ago now, but even as recently as last week. I believe it was. Something triggered the thought in his mind, once again, the awful picture and the words. Now, I'm not a left or right wing, in fact, I, I'm, I'm just middle of the road, politically. <laughs> but I feel very, very strongly about the freedom of other parents to show our children th these things. We wouldn't have them, but I have no control over other parents. Mm. But what, when I was little, what did that to me, that happened to me, was Stroll Peter, you know, the, the children's picture book. I mean, that kind of thing, which is an extreme case, doesn't really worry me. I mean, what I'm worried about for children, if they have any, is the kind of everyday thing that they'll see, the Starsky and Hutches, the ordinary action film that show men beating each other up, which show men being aggressive. I'm, I'm worried about, if, if it's a daughter, say, the kind of advertising, the kind of way that she will see women are meant to act because of the advertising. Now, that worries me far more than any one extreme piece of horror that they might come up against. But that's a matter of changing society's attitudes, not a matter of saying, no, you can't have this, no, you can't buy that. In fact, and in changing society's attitudes, that's very much, it can't be done by a secret censorship process. It's got to be done by public debate. But you see, I think what's happened is that the people who are against this bill have got themselves all tied up with this academic approach to the word Absolutely. censorship, the dirtiest word in the English language. If we thought about people, not ideas so much, but 
people. Why don't you think Kathy Myers. Can we reply people? on the Obscene Publications Act? We're still waiting for All right. Reply. Kathy, one second. Obscene Publications You see, what worries me is that Mary Whitehouse, having lost a series of cases, oh, immediately declares a law wrong. Let's take an example of a case where she... Saw one second, Mary. Excuse me, Mary. You threw a lot of questions at me. I'm going to put one back to you in a moment. Right, on. one, of the, one of the cases she lost, and let's take it as an interesting case of a thing that would, be, I'm certain, be refused certification, was a very serious film dealing how male aggression is produced. It was a film called Scum. It was a film about the effects of Borstal on its inmates, a very serious me, film, is, which happens to use violence in order to show its the message. IBA. Excuse me, Mary. Well, excuse Don't me. interrupt, because I didn't interrupt you. Well, this will have to be cut, because the IBA is appealing, the thing has gone to appeal, and we cannot discuss come on this program. We can discuss the film, because the film is the well, kind of film that will be film, refused certification under the bill because it happens to use violence in order to convey a message. The fact is, gross yes, it does show gross violence. It actually shows an, act of, it shows an act of buggery in a small boy and institution because of the way boy... I want to be able to use violence in a film if it is used to make an important message about how people are made violence. I beg your pardon? Will it help five-year-old children to see this? It will help a lot of people you want learn... Them to see this? What a silly question. No. I don't want them to see well, Tom and Jerry. Because there are oh, other ways. Very simple, Bill, to deal Excuse with that me. horrible issue. Because but that film, ha that that film has a lot of value other than what a five-year-old might get out of it. And, so and because you want to, you want to twist everything back to this cartoon oh, no, image it. of a child. Oh, no, it's video. It's I'm not sorry. The it's a cartoon image of a child which you throw at us and then try to drag everything, including the obscene publications, into line no, around this image of a child. Work with children Please every don't. Day, don't. You know, can't the, and what I find kids. interesting is that we have listened very patiently to the arguments put by those who support the bill. As soon as we try to reply, actually a great deal of heckling comes in because well, we actually have a more complex plate case to put. The fact is that violence per se is neither good nor bad. It is the use to which it's put, it is the context in which it's seen, and home is not necessarily the worst context in which to see violence. Therefore, I'm making a case that the Obscene Publications Act is only seen as a problem because actually a large number of cases have been lost by the moral majority campaigners in this country. We, we've gone way off the minutes, and I'll tell you why we've gone way off, way off being if I may. It's just the sort of difficulties that happened in Parliament. I mean, I like Mary Whitehouse. I think she, she tries to do things which she considers to be right. A lot of them I just don't agree with.